Once upon a time, there was a little girl who believed that she was magic. She had the most incredible imagination and was full of joy and wonder. She believed she was a mermaid, a princess, a pirate, and she was all of those things. And most of all, she loved stories. She would beg her parents to tell her one more. She always had her nose stuck in a book and got lost in movies. Stories were the heartbeat of the world and, and she could hear them. Dragons, knights, gods and monsters. She lived in a world of stories. But the thing was that most of the characters she looked up to, the girls and women, they were fragile, perfect, and they always seemed to need rescuing. Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, The Little Mermaid. Their happy endings always arrived with a prince and a crown. Their happy ever after was when someone chose them. Now, there were other stronger characters. Anne of Green Gables, Joe in Little Women, Shira, princess of power. And the little girl loved them. But her culture, religion, education had taught her to think that love and acceptance came through achievement, being agreeable, pleasant, modest, definitely not outspoken. And in getting someone to choose and marry you, now, these were powerful stories for a wide-eyed little mermaid, and eventually the stories, they turned into beliefs, and she forgot she was magic. She made herself small to feel safe in the world, and she fell asleep in the tower. Spoiler alert, that little girl, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm all grown up, and I'm a woman, and an artist and I'm reclaiming my stories and learning to choose myself and I hope this inspires you that you can do the same. So it actually wasn't that long ago that I started waking up in the tower and like anyone waking up from a really long nap, I was hungry. I was hungry to create. I wanted to write, draw, paint, anything. I wanted with all my heart to be an artist. But how do you become an artist? You see, I was so disconnected from my own creativity that making art felt childish, selfish even. I pushed past that and I practiced thousands of hours of honing my craft. But still, I was going to need to prove that I was worthy of that title artist and that art was a worthy use of my time. I was going to need to get permission from a gatekeeper I definitely needed to be crowned. So the viewpoint I had, it was outside in, that something out there in the world was going to make me feel worthy. If I have a studio, I'll believe I'm an artist. When I have an exhibition, I'll believe I'm an artist. When I win an art prize, maybe when I win a really big art prize, if I just keep chasing these extraordinary moments and milestones, I'll feel okay, I'll be enough. If someone just chooses me, shows me my worth and, and my talent, then I'll get rid of this crippling self-doubt. And all those milestones, they happened, including that really big prize. In 2022, I won Australia's richest art prize. Yeah, wow. <laughs> what a fairy tale moment. Um, this was it. You know, I'd been good and I'd worked hard and this was my happy ever after. And it was, it was the most magical moment of recognition. But on the other side of that was still me, with my limiting beliefs, my fears, doubts, and feelings of shame and unworthiness. None of that went away with being chosen. If anything, they were magnified. There's voices in my head. They said, you're a fraud. <laughs> they made a mistake. You don't deserve this. Who are you to have been chosen? Yeah, who am I to have been chosen? Who am I? Who am I? Hang on. Who am I? And it's funny, when you start to ask the right questions and say the right words, Cracks appear and light gets in, like magic. Abracadabra, 
which actually means what I speak, I will create. The stories I'm telling myself, they create my world and my life. And some of them were pretty crappy. Colette Dowling wrote a book about the Cinderella complex, the idea that due to cultural conditioning, many women fear independence and they seek safety and security outside of themselves. Well, that was me, glass slippers and all. And it's the lens that I had viewed much of my life through. So I decided that I would take a Marie Kondo approach to my views, beliefs, stories, not my house, haven't done my house. <laughs> <laughs> but I became aware of the stories, which ones sparked joy and which ones didn't. Many of them had been kicking around since childhood. And do you know what? They weren't actually all mine. And the moment of power came when I realised I didn't have to keep them. I didn't have to be Cinderella anymore. I could hold aloft my magic sword and be Shira. Belief. I need permission to be creative and to call myself an artist. Hard no for that one. All right, new belief. Creativity is my birthright. And when I'm creating, when I'm expressing myself and sharing that with my community, I'm an artist. Belief. I need, I need to be a good girl. I need to be productive and I need to keep myself small in order to be worthy. No, 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 no. Okay, new belief. My worth, it comes from inside me and how I choose to show up in the world. I can be messy, I can be loud, I can ruffle feathers and I can fail. Thankfully, not right now. <laughs> I can also succeed and I can shine brightly and I'm worthy in all of it. And I am allowed to take up space. So I reclaimed my stories which isn't easy and it's an ongoing process. I started taking care of myself, speaking kindly to myself, meditating, being grateful and encouraging myself to do hard things. Getting up here today, that's a hard thing. <laughs> but like Glennon Doyle says, we can do hard things. I've surrounded myself with a beautiful support network of people who see and value me and when I truly feel seen by myself and by my tribe, recognition from out there, it's wonderful and it's icing on the cake, but it's not the main prize and it doesn't determine my value as an artist or as a human. And finally, I climbed that tower and I rescued that little girl from the start of the story. And I gave her the biggest hug and I said, thank you. Thank you for believing in us. I'm sorry it took me so long to wake up. Can you teach me to remember who I am? Can you teach me my magic? So my journey to become an artist, of coming home to myself, it's an age-old one. I never had to become anything. I was always an artist. I just had to take my power back and choose myself. Art is a magic mirror and a wise teacher if you are brave enough to look at yourself. So I imagine a world where people start waking up from their towers and they choose which stories and beliefs they're going to keep and which ones they'll rewrite. I imagine a future where we're not afraid, embarrassed or needing permission to be creative. That future sounds really great. So, get a crown. This one I prepared earlier. Or a magic sword. <laughs> Do it by yourself or get your mates together and cheer each other on and say the magic words. I am whatever I want to be, whatever lights you up, whatever sparks joy. I'm Lauren Starr and I am an artist and also a mermaid.